I, I, I wanted to, Paola, to join at least for the hello session and just to say a few words. And then she, she will go with the kids uh, in the field because there are animals and, and many things that need to, to be uh, followed. So maybe you, could, you want to start? No, I just uh, want to say thank you. Uh, because uh, it's always nice when someone listens to experience uh, of someone else and uh, uh, to be invited is always something that uh, helps uh, the motivation of what we're doing, which is hard. <laughs> but uh, it's nice to see that there is a huge mo movement of people mm. doing stuff. And yeah, I hope you will enjoy. Matteo is very good in explaining and, and uh, teaching and so on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Have a nice session. I go to Thank save. you, Paula. <laughs> Thank you. Ciao. Uh, hello to everybody. Uh, first, uh, I, I would like to pre-apologize -ap for my English. Uh, I didn't study at school, so I learned it by just by studying on books, uh, agricultural books. So uh, if you don't understand something, maybe you can write on the chat and then the... Uh, Tobias or Manuel, uh, they they can maybe stop me and and they can explain more or maybe after in the answer uh, question and answer uh, session I can explain in a better way. So sorry if uh, if you not will not understand everything I say. I'll try to to do my best. Um, I think uh, just few words. Uh, about maybe maybe uh, Tobias already said it uh, in German, but I didn't get it. Uh, we are basically uh, we started here five years ago. Um, me and Paula, uh, which is my partner, uh, during uh, these five years we had two two children. So we started the farm. We had two children. Um, we we moved house for three times. And then, uh, apart from the farming, I I have been um, uh, keeping on consulting and giving uh, education on on regenerative farming and agroecology, and also building some uh, some market gardening tools, broad forks, and like that, in order to uh, fund uh, the farm expenses and the the investments. I my background. Uh, I basically always loved nature and uh, what can I say, <laughs> since a very young age I was looking at the John Seymour's book on self-sufficiency, uh, not loving to go to school, I loved uh, to stay in the forests, uh, to, to go in the mountains and finally I started uh, when I was 14 uh, an agricultural high school, a quite good one in Italy, I don't know how it's in Germany, but in Italy we have uh, specific uh, specific schools based on, on what you want to study. And so we had a, a, a school farm with all sorts of systems, very good um, soil labs, like the second best uh, soil lab in the region. And uh, basically I grew up uh, studying uh, conventional agriculture surrounded by um, conventional uh, farmers or actually the sons and daughters of uh, convention, conventional farmers but I was always uh, uh, liking the ecology the organic and, and already a permaculture at a quite young age uh, and then I just finished uh, my studies and I like five years uh, agricultural studies and then I left with bike uh, with a bicycle uh, and I went all around Europe, North, North Africa. I went in different countries all around the world, uh, keeping on studying, uh, going to visit and working for those people I was reading the books of. And uh, I kept on uh, um, going to courses, uh, running consultancies. So uh, for many years, uh, I've been around uh, studying ecologies of uh, different climates, uh, farming in different climates, on different soils, in different cultures. And then I came back to, uh, to Italy where we started the farm on the Lake Garda, Garda Lake, uh, with some friends. And then I met uh, Paola. Uh, after a few years, I was uh, farming on the uh, Lake Garda. And then Paola 
uh, was just uh, purchasing, was just bu uh, buying this piece of land on Lake Iseo, which is uh, the nearby lake, uh, but smaller one. And then we started this, uh, we started this uh, adventure. Basically, uh, I start the, the, the presentation by saying that uh, uh, Iside, uh, the, the name of the farm is, is uh, it means the, the god Isis, uh, because uh, Lake Iseo, Iseo it means the temple of uh, uh, Isis. And, but in the past, uh, during Roman times, uh, it seems that the, the name of the lake, uh, it was uh, actually Isis, which is the, the goddess of uh, the fertility and the... And the uh, so it, it, it was a good connection with the, with the, with the landscape and, and the history of the, of the place. Do you see, do you see the presentation? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, as you see in the, in, in our farm logo, uh, we have three elements, uh, which is, uh, uh, a vegetable, uh, an onion, a tree, a fruit tree, or any tree and then an animal, in this case, a cow. Uh, the logo already, already says a lot about, uh, about what, is our, uh, what our farm is going to be. Uh, it's going to be a farm with annual, with perennial uh, crops uh, and, uh, and animals. So the, the final idea is gonna be a silvopastoral, agro-silvopastoral system, uh, which is based on, uh, on agroecology and regenerative practices uh, in order to create uh, um, uh, an increasing complex uh, productive uh, system. I don't believe in, uh, in those uh, ideas of uh, uh, self-managing food forests, self-managing natural agricultural system, but I, I think that uh, more we get in, into uh, agroecological complexity, more we have to... Um, more we have to work actually uh, more we have to work uh, maybe not uh, not with our hands but a lot with our uh, our brain a lot of uh, designing a lot of um, looking at uh, the feedbacks uh, looking at what every single season is is uh, is uh, telling us so I remember when I was at David Holmgren, the co-founder of uh, the permaculture in, in Australia, he was telling me, look, uh, more our system becomes older, uh, more I have to work. And actually, uh, when I was younger, I was thinking, okay, I create a system that self-manages uh, manages itself. And then I will stay on the hammock most of the time, harvesting uh, fruits, like in a sort of paradise, uh, paradise idea of uh, of uh, farming. But he say more the system is able to photosynthesize to transform some energy into biomass into production. What happens is that you. You have to manage more biomass, you have to manage more insects, you have to manage more animals, you have to manage uh, more biomass in general. Okay, so is it is a six hectare farm where I have a 70 uh, meter uh, al altitude difference from the top uh, to the bottom is, uh, okay, uh, you have, uh, this is a, a, a Google Earth a picture of the, of the first, Year, yeah, of the first year where you could you can see these lines and these lines. These are all um, uh, like the future uh, tree lines, uh, orchard lines, and and uh, uh, where we we planted the the most of the trees uh, of the farm, which we were actually preparing them. Later, you will see uh, more in specific how how we did that. So the farm is basically surrounded by. By this forest, um, there are sort of uh, valleys with uh, water courses, which are going. Um, there is a, a water source in this area, which goes uh, around. Uh, um, no, actually, goes the whole year round. We have water, and there is another water course here, which goes uh, like nine months, um, nine months during the year. Uh, just uh, between brackets, uh, I need, I need. 10 minutes to, to be able to speak better and to like to, to, to stretch my brain and then you will understand more of what I'm saying. So uh, this is basically the, the, the farm. Do you see the, the, the arrow of the mouse? 
Yes, we see it. Okay, yeah. perfect. So basically, this is uh, the property. Yeah, six hectares. This is the top of the farm, and then goes down with big, medium, and small terraces uh, because it's quite uh, uh, it's quite of a slope. Um, at the at the top, um, like. Um, we have around 1,200 uh, meters high uh, mountains. At the bottom, uh, we have uh, a quite big lake. So there is this very big wall. We have uh, on the top of those uh, mountains is dolomite, uh, which uh, the characteristic of dolomite is uh, a karst uh, system, which means lots of caves under the ground. So we have like a big, big roof on top of our uh, farm, on top of our landscape, that harvests the rain. The rain goes all into these um, uh, underground caves, underground lakes. And then from those lakes, underground lakes, we get in the whole village, in the whole area, a lots of um, uh, water sources, water springs, uh, which are mostly going the whole year round in the, in the whole area. So it's a, it's a quite particular area. We have um, temperate climate, but going toward uh, Mediterranean climate, we have uh, lots of olive trees. We have around uh, 250 uh, olive trees. Some of them, they are very, very big and very old. We, we, we get uh, from one big tree, we can get 120, 100, 130 kilos of olives. And then there are many others, as you can see here, which are like 15, 20, 30 years old. Uh, still, they produce quite a lot, but not as much as the uh, big ones here. So, uh, the idea, I spend a little bit of time on, on these maps uh, in, in order to uh, make you understanding a little bit more the, the, the context. Um, all around the, the edges of the farm, the, the borders of the farm, we are setting out uh, a sort of animal highway, uh, which means a double edge made with uh, um, uh, thorny, uh, spiky plants. Uh, like uh, Gleditia triacanthos, Hypophia rhamnoide, like sea buckthorn, honey locust, all of these uh, producing uh, fodder trees and uh, also fruit bearing uh, shrubs or trees, um, nitrogen fixing, producing a lot of biomass, uh, stopping erosion. And we are going, we are making these alleys where we have these corridors where animal can actually run all around the farm as it was a highway around a city. And then when we need to graze a terrace or a slope or uh, a, um, a cropped area after we finish to harvest, we just take the animals and then we put uh, movable nets, fencing net, electric nets, and the animal eats everything in few days or in few hours, and then back to the highway, going to the next area that has to be uh, grazed. We can't really do uh, a continuous grazing of the whole area because we do rotational grazing, like sort of holistic management style, where the animals, they move. Uh, every day we move the animals between two and six, uh, um, two and six times in order to give them fresh pasture and fresh fodder all the time um, and also not to have overgrazing and to stimulate the pasture because for us they are uh, a very important uh, free source of uh, uh, biomass and free source of energy uh, from the sun. So the, and because the characteristic of our land which is basically is morenic soil which was pushed up uh, the mountains by a big glacier of the Valcamonica Valka Valley. Um, we have very particular soils where uh, here we were building in the greenhouse and in 45 meters length, we found six different, uh, completely different soils going from a clay, a red clay, finishing with a whitish clay, passing through uh, like uh, river sands, uh, completely uh, without organic matter, without uh, clay. So the whole property is is like it has got pockets and strains of of soil. So sometimes we get very good pasture in one period, so we have to move the animals there. Sometimes we get very poor pasture in another uh, place, so uh, we have to give 
time to the pasture to, to grow back. So it's, it's a quite complex, uh, but very exciting uh, property. This uh, picture was taken, uh, I think now two years ago. You already see uh, the free trees they grew. Uh, this actually was taken by Darren Doherty from Regrarians that is our friend and, and my mentor for many, many years. So he came uh, a couple of times to visit us. And then he took this picture, you can see it's a bit drier uh, moment of the year. We can get very, very dry also three months, uh, more or less without, uh, without rain. The soil is mainly sandy at the top soil, but, but then it changes at the, at the, at the bottom. So <clears throat> I start with the presentation and showing you uh, some of the systems that we have developed. They're just examples. They are not recipes I want to give you. Uh, it's something that we do in our farm and that will not maybe do in another farm. But our farm uh, wants to be, first of all, uh, a family farm where we can live outside, we can eat our food, we can, we can uh, basically live a sort of self-sufficient uh, style, is an is a, um, economical, commercial farm. Uh, we have a, um, a CSA, uh, which goes around uh, between 50 uh, to 80 uh, members. And um, we basically sell them all, all the produce that comes from the farm and you uh, uh, later will see uh, what we produce and then we have restaurants and we have no CSA uh, customers so yeah we have very good restaurants like Michelin star um, restaurants uh, they're very good they, they buy uh, from like conventional uh, vegetables conventional I mean uh, uh, the, the, the ones that everybody knows from very particular wild herbs or particular wild fruits, uh, mushrooms, and, and, and so on. So we have a quite diversified farm. We grow now after five years, I think we have around 130, 140 different varieties of, uh, of fruits, of uh, uh, shrubs, and so on, plus all the vegetables, varieties, and species. So we are basically and trying to experiment the most resilient, the most um, interesting from agronomic point of view, from uh, taste and from uh, uh, storage uh, point of view, the best apples, the best peaches, uh, the, the best apricots and so on. Uh, so we, we, at the beginning, we start with lots of variety, a lots of um, uh, fruit biodiversity in order to see uh, those trees that need too many treatments, we will cut them, regraft them, and, and keep on using the most resistant trees. Uh, it's not that we, we don't like to, to use the, like to treat, to spray the trees, but because we have so many things to do, even just to go with the tractor and to mount the atomizer and the, the, spray, the sprayer, it takes time. So we want to try to decrease as much as we can the amount of uh, spray uh, that we, the, the amount of treatments that we do on our trees, on our shrubs, on our uh, vegetables. It, it will take a long time. It's a, it's a matter of genetic selection of the, the most appropriate genetics of um, for our soil, for our climate. Uh, also, uh, looking at the climate change that every year, uh, every year, uh, there is a completely different meteorology, uh, different weather patterns. So we are also seeing what crops work well in a wet year, what crops work well in a dry year, and so on. Yeah. So uh, the kill this is a, a kiln pattern, but we will talk later. We have because now it seems uh, flat, of course, but we have 70 meters, as I was saying, from here uh, to here. Uh, 70 meters uh, in difference in altitude. And um, the problem is to find a flat spot to, to produce vegetables. So we don't have a flat spot in the farm. The only one is, uh, is this greenhouse, uh, these two greenhouses, uh, which uh, we were building in the, uh, two years ago. Um, they are not on a flat, they are on a, on a slope. Uh, this is uh, gardens on slopes. We have gardens here and there where we can manage to, to farm more or less on, on, uh, on, uh, on a flatland or on a slight uh, slope. Um, we start, you enter the farm and this is the view. 
uh, is, is quite beautiful, is, is, uh, is very nice. I start from the, the, the main axis. Uh, I like to go uh, with elements in order to, to allow you understanding the way we think, which uh, I imagine is, is uh, from one point of view is very simple for someone, but from someone else maybe uh, is not. So this uh, ex, main axis from, from the village, uh, it was uh, uh, an accessible uh, axis uh, because it's a very strong slope. And every time that it rained, uh, it was creating erosion, canyons, um, like destroying the, the road. So with the car, it was very difficult to, um, to actually to drive. So we decided to, we made a compromise. We say, okay, this is gonna be an access forever or at least for a few hundreds of years. So we decided to, to do these two strips of, uh, of concrete, but we say, okay, uh, this allow us not to stay all the time with a, an excavator fixing the, the road, uh, which is destroyed every time that uh, we have a storm and we are having very big storms in the last, uh, uh, in the last few years, something like 60, uh, 60 to 80 millimeters in one hour, uh, in one hour uh, event, uh, storm event is quite a lot and it, it really, really creates big problems. So what we, di what we did, we created these two strips of, of concrete, uh, which allow us uh, to have this permanent access. We, we, here we will building actually the, uh, the water catchment um, uh, from the road. From this road, we managed now to harvest one and a half billion uh, liters of uh, rainwater, <clears throat> which normally was going into the valleys with lots of soil and then into the lake, creating problems of, of course, eutrophization and, and, and everything you already know um, about uh, er erosion and erosion control, which in our area is, is, is very, is a very big problem. I don't know where you are, but uh, in our area, in, in, in uh, warm temperate and Mediterranean climate, where we have a dry season and, and the soil tends to be bare in, in some spot, if it's not well managed, then we, we really get big problems, losing soil, losing water. So we managed to harvest water and then this is just a, a specific. And this is the, the this was the road this summer. We planted alfalfa, alpha, which is the, the king of the herbaceous uh, animal fodder. He's a nitrogen fixing pioneer with very deep um, tap roots, which explore and go to get the nutrients where other plants don't manage. Plus is a nitrogen fixing plants, uh, makes a symbiosis with uh, rhizobium uh, bacteria, which allows the plant to, uh, to absorb a lot of nitrogen, uh, which in row, it means to have a very high in protein, uh, a very high protein rich uh, plants. So the road, it was like a desert when we arrive, uh, which was destroying car suspensions and, and we had to spend a lot of money on fixing it all the time. Now is a, a, a water harvesting uh, roof is, uh, is an access and uh, a high quality production uh, of uh, alpha alpha. We decided to do two strips in order not to have too much concrete. So just the, the amount of concrete that is necessary for the biggest uh, truck or tractor to, to, uh, to get to our field. And, uh, but still to have, um, to have um, some green also in the middle. In the middle, of course, the cars, they self uh, prune uh, what is growing here. So in the middle, we have a particular machine. Later, you will see the pictures. is um, is called uh, um, a flail mower harvester, which basically is a, is a machine that shreds hay or the material and harvest it in a container. So we use this uh, strip. Um, we harvest, we flail mow and harvest this alpha alpha and clover, and we take it to uh, to some IBC containers like uh, big tanks uh, where we add this biomass, we add water, and then we produce fertilizer then, uh, that then is uh, diluted in irrigation water in order to feed uh, our uh, crops. I have to go a little bit faster. 
uh, this is another section of the road where we didn't want to use the concrete because the slope is not so uh, steep. But uh, I don't know if you can see the gradient goes toward this newly built uh, stone wall. Uh, behind this stone wall, um, this, we were building it, there is a, a drainage system. So the water goes here and enter under the wall. Uh, and also we harvest all of this water. Uh, this is um, a compacted um, uh, dolomite um, rock dust stabilizer, which is sort of uh, concrete, but is, is rock dust. Yep. We also have, uh, as I was telling you previously, uh, a water spring here. We were fixing uh, the system. We were making sealed traps uh, in order to stop the, 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 um, the huge amount of organic silt and, and uh, non-organic silt that builds up in the, in the system. So we have a first jump uh, where the water drops his, uh, his, um, his uh, sediment, his silt. And then a sec second tank, of course, we, we take the water from the top uh, so the silt drops on the, at the bottom, and then we have another tank. And from this tank, these are quite old pictures. Now we have uh, willows growing with roots, like uh, doing ph phytoremediation and oxygenating the, the water. And then from here, it gets, for the moment, we use these very cheap uh, uh, secondhand um, uh, swimming pools. Uh, they are very practical, very fast to build, very, uh, this, for example, is like, uh, 11,000 uh, liters. Uh, we harvest the water because the spring, uh, it produces um, around 20, 30,000 liters of water per day, but little by little. And when we need irrigation, we need quite a lot of irrigation at the same time. So we need to harvest it also during the, the night when we are not using it. So um, the only problem of this irrigation is, uh, is connected to the fact that it has got a very high uh, pH, it's very alkaline. We have a 8.6 pH with very active lime, which is uh, a very big problem in farming. Active lime, it, it destroys, uh, it destroys the, 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 the soil uh, from chemical, biological point of view. So what we did, and this was just built, now we have um, in this water, we have, um, uh, fish, we have uh, um, uh, sweet water snails and uh, sweet water crabs, uh, not crabs, but um, uh, crayfishes, uh, which actually uh, eat the algae uh, the, that grows in the water and create a whole beautiful balance system. Actually, we put just the, the fish and then uh, water birds, or I don't know how, um, the, the snails, they arrive. Um, we have tritons, we have salamanders, we have so many, so many animals uh, in, this, uh, in this water. So the animals, by the organic activity, by, by, uh, by the, the feces and the, their, their castings, they, they lower down the pH of, uh, of the water, which then is also lowered down by the addition of, as I was telling you before, um, like um, uh, fertilizers that we produce basically with uh, uh, dynamic accumulators plants. And then we um, make them decomposing in water. And then when they, they lose uh, their, their fiber, the fiber decomposes in, in water, we dilute them, the, the, the liquid fertilizer into this water. Uh, this is, uh, of course, we are very young, a very young farm. We don't have structure yet. I, I put you, um, I don't know if you can see here, these are the plants we are uh, starting to build the next uh, month. Finally, after five years, it was a very long bureaucratic process, but finally the town hall accepted our projects. Um, we, we are going to build, I don't know if you can understand, this is the, the soil profile. We are going to build as uh, under the soil with the secondhand shipping containers, which are we are going to modify, cut the, cut the, the, the walls, put them together. And then we found uh, secondhand concrete blocks and secondhand um, prefabricated um, roof, uh, concrete roof, which uh, we are going uh, to put under the soil. This first structure is gonna be uh, like, um, 
a barn for the tractor and all the machineries and the hay. And then in the back under the soil, we are going to have a mushroom, uh, a mushroom uh, uh, facility, mushroom uh, room uh, where we are going to produce uh, um, uh, edible, edible and medicinal mushrooms, which now we are producing uh, in a in a um, cellar, but uh, uh, not in the field. Then we are going to have um, a sort of commercial kitchen where we can pres make preserve uh, jams, juices, and uh, where we can also in the future kill chickens and and so on. And then we have. Uh, cellars uh, under completely under the soil where we can uh, store vegetables, uh, make uh, cider, apple cider, and and so on. And this is another uh, farm structure is is um, is um, uh, just just a workshop. Uh, now this is gonna be um, not like this the roof, but like this. Uh, the town hall allow us allowed us to make uh, ponds, water ponds on the top of the of the structures, uh, we will have like seven, eight centimeters high water. And in this water, we are going to grow something that we already grow, but uh, in containers, uh, azolla. I don't know if you know what is azolla. Is, is this a floating uh, nitrogen fixing fern, which uh, grows just like so fast and is a very good um, amendment for the soil is used in, in uh, Southeast Asia uh, in uh, companion planting within rice paddy fields where it covers the soil, it fixes the nitrogen, and then when they, they drain the water from the paddies, it goes on the soil, it decomposes, and it releases nitrogen. We will harvest it together with water hyacinth and uh, um, uh, duckweed and all these beautiful uh, water uh, floating uh, dynamic accumulators in order to to have a cheap roof because we are going to make a pond with like a pond liner, which is very cheap. Uh, we are going to harvest water from it and the overflow from these structures is gonna go in these uh, uh, tanks. We are going to have um, like uh, concrete tanks, quite big ones, which are going to be the floor for uh, our, um, how to say pergola outside the structures and then uh, water harvesting for the rainwater. It's going to be 125,000 liters uh, water tanks, like uh, 21,000 um, liters, uh, eight tanks um, like that. And then we are going to produce fish and crayfish uh, for our consumption, but in is is enough space also to produce um, to produce fish to to sell. So a part of the um, food. Uh, for these fish will be the azolla, will be the, the duckweed and, and the plants that we are going uh, to grow on top. Some of the uh, fish that we already grow is the gambusia. I don't know in English, is, is, a, um, is a fish from uh, Florida, uh, which is very tolerant to hot water. Uh, so, so high, high temperature water, uh, high uh, pollution and high salinity. So they grow very fast, they're very small, they grow very fast, so you can harvest them and give them uh, to the fish. So yeah, I go on with the presentation. This was the, 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 the biggest piece of land uh, known terrace of the farm when we arrived. Here we, we set up the, the key line system, uh, you see the flags. For those one who don't know, the key line system is basically a geographical and topographic um, system that allows to um is a display that allows to work on this line or to plant on 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 these lines that will naturally invert the behave the natural behavior of rainwater that normally wants to go this is the ridge and that one is the ridge and this is the valley so water normally naturally will go from there to here and from here to there the key line pattern it creates an, an inver inversion of the behavior of the water. So uh, you create lines that uh, uh, force the water to grow from the valley towards the ridges. Now it's optical, uh, you don't really understand from here, but basically when you see uh, uh, raining a lot now, and you will see later uh, the, the tree systems, the water flows on the surface uh, going from the wettest and, 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 and most, 
uh, erodible uh, spots to the driest and the least erodible uh, spaces, uh, places. So basically is a sort of um, optimization and uh, um, doesn't come the word, um, a system that allows to homogenize the moisture levels in the whole landscape in the same uh, way. So uh, how we started our, now I talk a little bit about agroforestry systems, orchard systems and, and um, regenerative agro agroforestry systems. Please, uh, Tobias, uh, can you tell me if you understand what I'm saying, if you can hear my voice well? Yes, it's perfect. Like we understand or I do, I understand everything and I translate all the, um, the Gambusia and everything to German in the chat. So it's working, it's working good. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so we started from here, we set up the, the flags. Uh, so the key line, uh, the key line pattern which they are basically starting from a contour line and you check all the contour lines in the, in the landscape, you could decodify the, the best ones. And then from those ones, in our case, what we did, we, we, cut, the, we cut the grass and then um, we, we cut the hay. It was May actually, the hay was very tall. And then this is a hay rake. Now you'll start to see the video. Do you see the video? Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. And um, what we did, now you'll see, was going very slow in order to follow the flags uh, that we, we, we placed on the key lines. So in this way, we collected all the hay that we cut it on, on the key lines. Okay, by collecting the hay, what we did is it was, uh, it, it has been, sorry, it has been to create this sort of herbicide effect. Uh, we could cut and collected hay during nine months. So we had this beautiful layer of mulch on um, about 80 centimeter wide uh, beds. Yeah. And what happened is that the roots of the grass that was laying the grass that was laying under the mulch started to decompose and we have sandy soil so the roots they get quite deep uh, meanwhile uh, the roots were decomposing all the mulch started to de decompose too attract attracted um earthworms attracted um, um uh, decomposing uh, mushrooms uh, fungi uh, attracted all sorts of insects that started to work on this huge amount of organic matter on the on these uh, channels created by the roots uh, decomposing. Then what we did, we just worked. We have a yeoman's plow, which is a sort of um, reaper uh, subsoiler, which really cuts the soil and decompact it. Uh, in the in the deeper horizons, so we managed because of these months of uh, roots decompositions. After a few months, we managed to to reap a single line uh, with one single uh, yeoman's shank uh, to about 65 centimeters deep. So we created this beautiful soil. The soil wasn't tilled, wasn't inverted with the plow. We kept his original structure, uh, the structure of the pores created by uh, the fungi, by bacteria, by organic, uh, decomposing organic matter, decomposing roots. So we had really an amazing soil. Then uh, you see here, it's just like, a, uh, just like a surgery, just a cut in the, in the soil. Uh, what you see here is not soil, it's, it's decomposed mulch, yeah? So I show you uh, then with this video, Do you hear the music? Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I, I stop the music. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, what you can see on the right, there are the key lines. Uh, we took nine months of time 
in order to create uh, uh, these beautiful key lines. We work them in the middle and you see myself in both of the videos where you, uh, you can see how hard it is the soil where we haven't been uh, preparing it uh, uh, that way, I was telling you before, and how deep and soft and, and, and black is, is under the, the mulch, yeah? So this was very easy then to, to dig big holes for the trees. At the same time, what I like is, uh, um, sorry, I have to attach. I realized that uh, the, the uh, electricity, the power is not attached to the computer. Just a second, sorry. Code inconvenient. Okay. Oh, good, can you, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, I hear you. Yes, okay. it's all good. Perfect. So um, these are the key lines. These are the holes that we, are, uh, we were uh, digging. What I like about working with lines is that, of course, we are is, is like creating a forest uh, soil ecosystem on, on one line. So all the earthworms, all the mycorrhizal fungi, all the saprophytic fungi, all the decomposing uh, critters, insects, and so on, and all the roots of the trees, they will not, uh, ha um, they will be able to grow along these very long fertile uh, lines where there has been an accumulation of organic matter, where there's been an accumulation of, of an increased amount of microbial, beneficial microbial activity. So of course we are digging the hole of the tree, but then the trees, uh, I was checking uh, in the first year, uh, the, the, the roots of the trees, they never went into, into the pasture because there is a little bit of uh, competition between the, the grass world, the grassland world and the tree world. But here there was no competition. So the trees, they could grow like very long the first year. They developed like, like, like hell, beautiful, deep and, and, and long. Uh, the nursery guy that came to, to visit us, uh, the one that sell, sold us many of the plants, uh, he, he came after one year and he said he never seen such an amazing growth on, on his trees in anywhere in, in, uh, in many years. Uh, of, uh, of selling the trees. So it was very, very good. Uh, uh, this is um, what we did actually in the, in the um, hazel, hazelnuts, uh, no, sorry, in the walnut uh, grove, in the walnut um, orchard, a similar preparation. But when we finished to plant the orchard, we, we have been uh, uh, sowing uh, a vetch and tillage radish cover crop on the, on the key line and then we cut the hay in between the lines and uh, we, with the hay rake, we covered the seeds. And then what happened? The cover crop filled all the, all the, all the soil where the, the mulch war, was. And then we filled the soil with roots. Um, so we kept the structure because the walnut, the problem of the walnut is that in the first year it grows very slowly very, very slowly. And then the roots, they don't manage to colonize the whole lines. So it means that if nothing is growing, the, the soil compact is itself, it becomes more and more compact and it will be more difficult for the walnuts to, to grow through. So uh, with a cover crop like that, we managed to keep the, the, the structure of the soil. Then when it was tall enough, we crimp it, uh, down, we, 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 we flatten it down, and then we cut the hay and put the hay back on top of the, 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 the green mulch in order to kill it. And so here in these lines, we reached um, uh, an organic matter of uh, uh, 9% where the local uh, um, organic matter normally goes from 2 to 3.5, okay? So the first year we grew in order to substitute the, the weeds growing through the mulch. Uh, this is back to the fruit trees line. Uh, here you see uh, a young uh, apricot in his uh, uh, really first two, three months of growth. And we grew annual 
uh, uh, selected weeds, which are the vegetables. Yeah, so we substituted the need of the soil of colonizing uh, where there is no green with um, with this uh, with with vegetables. Yeah, so the roots of the vegetables allow the structure to keep uh, very well porous, very well structured, and the fruit trees is not like the. The grass, which is perennial, has got very thick and very competitive roots. Uh, the, the fruit trees and the vegetables, they grow very well uh, together in the first years. This is a few months later. Uh, in, on, we experimented uh, one vegetable per species of trees. Here you see the young peaches uh, coming out from uh, a, a potato. Uh, a potato um, uh, crop, and then cutting the hay, and uh, um, uh, again with the hay rake. In the in the case of the potato, we were actually healing the potatoes instead of uh, in, instead of uh, with the soil uh, with the hay. So we had a very good uh, uh, harvest. We didn't have to disturb the soil. We didn't have to disturb the uh, the peaches uh, roots, uh, the very young ones. Yeah. Here we try with the corn, and actually, corn is the is the master of the uh, of the vegetables. Let's call it like this because it's, uh, it was a sweet corn, and the roots of this beautiful C4 um, uh, grass-like plant they produce a huge amount of uh, hormones, growth hormones, and really the the peaches that grew. Um, in between the, the corn, they, want, they were the ones that, that grew like the best, the best crop in the whole orchard. Uh, plus, when the corn grew, it protected the young peaches from the very strong uh, sun in July and August. I mean, we, we get 40, uh, 42 degrees easily during the summertime. So for fruit trees, uh, which are aim, mm, they, they should be growing uh, normally in the edges of the, of the forest, actually we had this, uh, this beautiful protection. Uh, can you tell me how much time is left for the presentation? Because I'm going too slowly. <laughs> we have about half an hour. Okay, perfect. So maybe I go a little bit faster now. Uh, now you see again uh, the, the trees and the potatoes. And this is the system, was the system, uh, when was this? Ba -ba -ba -ba. This was this, uh, the last, uh, this last uh, springtime. So now you see uh, you ha we have uh, the trees that we planted four years ago. Uh, lots of production uh, from the second year. Uh, look, from the second year, from the peaches, we had some trees bearing, producing 30 kilos of, of peaches, the second year, yeah? We used um, like medium, uh, medium uh, vigor rootstocks. So we pruned them, we, we, we trained them. We didn't really follow as we should have done the orchard. We don't use copper. We don't use um, pyretrum uh, as a choice because we, we would not, uh, not see uh, the, the symptoms of, of the diseases that we want to see in order to choose the best crops. And we, want, we don't want to use copper because of course it's not good for the soil. Um, there, there is some big problems uh, when we are talking about geopolitical um, issue uh, connected to, to copper extraction. And we don't want to use pyrethrum, which is a, a, a known specific insecticide, which is actually allowed in organic agriculture, but is worse than many chemical uh, specific um, uh, insecticides. So we choose that and we lose a lot of production in some, in some species, in some varieties, but this is, uh, this is the, the way we want to do it. We are gain, gaining, getting so many information, so much experience by pushing the limits that, uh, that I, 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 can't, I, I can't go back and, and do differently. Of course, you will see some ugly trees sometimes, uh, but they are the ones that will cut down and so on. So the system right now, now here I, I, I didn't find the, the right picture. Uh, maybe later it comes. Anyway, we have fruit trees on the line. This is the key line I showed you before. In between the fruit trees, we have um, currants, 
we have gooseberries, we have aronias, we have Siberian tree shrubs. Um, they are the, the shrub layer, uh, the berry layer, which can grow under the fruit trees. Um, in, in between the fruit trees line, we have vegetables or pasture. Yeah, the pasture is managed by animals, uh, by grazing animals. Uh, the, the vegetables that are very intensive and, and growing very beautifully. Now you see from another perspective, the vegetables, the, the tree lines, uh, the other tree lines. And this is a picture from two years ago. In between, now you see here, this is Josta berries. Uh, in, in between the fruit trees, so basically here, we planted uh, paulonia trees. Now these paulonia trees, uh, they are like six, seven meters tall and they are uh, producing the protection. They will produce, of course, now they are just uh, very tall. Uh, well, you can see here, uh, here it was actually pa -pa -pa, around, I would say around June, July, something like that. Uh, now they are six meters tall because they grew six meters from, from the soil level to six, seven meters from May uh, to September. So it's a very powerful C4, the only C4 tree we can use uh, in our climate, uh, very fast growing. You see these, these leaves, which are full of holes. Uh, these are uh, the, we had three hail events and this is why we are growing Paulonia. Paulonia is, is gonna grow on top of the orchard and then we are gonna, we're gonna pollard it, and then to grow every year, uh, one year old uh, secondary branches, which are, are going to protect the whole orchard from hail, from excess heat, and producing also biomass uh, that can be um, can be shredded and used as as a as a fertilizer and as a mulch. These are um, uh, vegetables lines before transplants, and but later we'll speak about the vegetables. Now uh, we have then the bush layer, the Paulonia le uh, le level. On the left side of uh, some tree lines, we planted spaced uh, one meter apart um, willows, um, uh, mulberries. We planted uh, um, elderberry uh, trees, which are going to keep, we are going to keep like bushes. We are going to um, copy them very often in order to have biomass, but also on, on, on that side, um, an integration uh, for the herbivores, for the sheep, for the donkeys, uh, as, uh, uh, as a fodder, as a tree fodder, as a shrub fodder. Then here we go to another system. This is uh, uh, the, how we do the diamond shape. I don't know if you know the diamond shape is, is the, the most efficient a geometrically efficient pattern in order to put the highest amount of plants in, in a determined, in a defined uh, area is basically the hexagon of the bees and every uh, angle, every, how you call it, uh, vertex, I think you, you call it, uh, in, at every vertex of the hexagon, uh, you plant a plant. Basically, it's very simple. You, in this case, is, uh, is the plantation of uh, our hazelnuts uh, orchard, which we grow on slopes. Uh, slopes for us are, are a very big problem because they are very slow, slopey and difficult to manage and we can't manage it with the machinery. So we decided to grow hazelnuts and, and um, the grass managed by the sheep. So when the hazelnut, they, they fell on the ground, then we go with a electric or, or a powered um, air uh, blower and then we uh, we blow all the hazelnuts uh, at the at the bottom of the of the slope and then we harvest them uh, we will uh, we uh, we haven't started yet to harvest them basically you take a rope in order to 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 do this uh, diamond shape you make knots at every four meters in our case and then you just move one uh, one uh, you put uh, you sign with a flag or, or, or a stick where you want to plant the plant and then you put you take the vertex and you move uh, you move you stretch it to another point in this way you produce uh, there are like um, um, uh, triangles with uh, uh, all the the, the um, basically four meters uh, uh, how do you call this uh, basis yeah 
and then uh, the uh, the result is uh, I I don't know if you can see it, but for example, this is the middle of the hexagon, and this is one side, the other 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 side, and the other side. Yeah. So this is the slope, and we manage it uh, as I told you with uh, with sheep. In this case, with sheep is is very is very tricky because you have to you have to uh, look at them because when they finish to eat the grass, they start to eat the hazels. So you have to move them very fast. Is again is is a new way of not is an old new way of managing animals. It's more like a, a shepherd. Uh, shepherd style, uh, where you you stay with your animal, uh, you, you go and check for them uh, very very often. Uh, this in return gives an inc uh, incredible increase in uh, pasture quality because they move very fast, they eat everything that they they find, and then uh, the the all the insects that um, like the dung beetles, the earthworms, all the insects that eat the dung, they take it to the ground, they increase dramatically as month by month the, uh, the fertility of the pasture, which changes in, uh, in species. They become, the species of the pasture, they become more and more and more edible, more and more digestible, more and more protein rich. So uh, the animal actually, they increase the quality of the pasture. Um, yeah, so the pasture system, we have many different ones, but I, I go on because otherwise uh, I just talk about uh, those, those systems. Uh, fertility wise, we produce our own compost. 19% is uh, um, farm producer uh, um, uh, wood chips uh, with a flame, uh, flame mower harvester. And then we add around 10% of, uh, of dung or um, the, the solid byproduct of uh, biogas production from one farm that I consult, so we know the quality of the material. We take uh, around one year uh, to produce uh, a very, very high, re uh, very uh, high carbon to nitrogen ratio compost. So it's a very fungal based uh, decomposition, a low. Uh, low temperature and, 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 and long decomposition. So we get this very good high quality with a high um, uh, CEC uh, capacity of, uh, of, uh, of the, the, the compost. We add during the decomposition process, actually at the beginning when the temperature are higher and the activity of the microorganism is very strong, uh, we add rock dust. We use mainly volcanic rock dust is pumice because it has got low calcium and low magnesium, which we have in, in high amounts in our soils, and rich in potassium, which we have a, a very little amount in our soils, and very rich in micro elements, uh, plus high porosity and a high capacity of retaining uh, water. So we increase uh, through, via the compost and the rock dust in the compost, the capacity of our sandy soil to keep uh, nutrients and to keep water, which naturally doesn't, uh, is not like that. Okay. Then we produce uh, um, uh, biofertilizers with all sorts of ingredients, uh, with all sorts of tradition, South American, Korean, uh, North, uh, like uh, Elleningham style. Uh, we are getting to a more simplified system where we have um, we have these water tanks where we put, as I was telling you before, um, uh, uh, dynamic accumulators, plants. It can be comfrey, it can be clover, it can be alfalfa, alpha, it can be dock, it can be weeds, it can be all the leftovers from the vegetable crops or fruits. We chuck them in water, we add some uh, compost, some microorganisms that we produce in the farm, and then we let, we let it decompose like that. And uh, now we are, uh, this is fish, uh, fish uh, emulsion, fish uh, hydrolyzed. We make it with milk whey, uh, the rest from uh, fisheries, and then we, uh, we, we let it, um, there, this is a, um, a mixing a system every 15, 20 meter, uh, 20 minutes, it mix, mixes uh, the, the fish emulsion. And from this, uh, we can get a very high uh, nutritious um, uh, fertilizer that we are spraying on, on the trees mainly. 
when the, the fruits are not there. This, is, for example, is oh, it's not. It's not going in the video. Anyway, uh, this is a way we activate the microorganism uh, with pumps uh, going through flu flow forms. In this case, it's not our uh, farm, but we use uh, similar similar systems. Yeah, so uh, we, pr we produce farm uh, local microorganisms, and then when we need them, either for animals or for our um, vegetables or fruit trees or so on, we, we activate that we oxygenate the, the water, we add uh, a sort of a source of uh, uh, sugars and so on. Now, what we do actually is um, is mainly um, we we produce uh, biofertilizers by uh, we we shred we make wood chips with wet wood at the end of the winter when when there is lots of sap. We chuck the the, the wood chips in the water. We add water. We pasteurize, sort of pasteurization. The wood chips in anaerobic conditions, they get sort of sterilized. Then we remove the wood chips that they release all the saps. And then the wood chips, they're used to produce edible, um, uh, edible mushrooms. And the liquid, which is extremely rich in glucose, in amino acids, and in, in uh, vitamins and in hormones, actually that the plants normally send uh, to the roots to feed the microbial um, uh, the communities that support in row uh, the plant, what happened uh, in this liquid start a uh, beautiful, amazing uh, natural uh, fermentation, mainly by uh, lactobacteria, which are present in the sap, which are present in the, in the air. And they produce this amazing base uh, of biofertilizers uh, where we add rock dust, we had seaweeds, uh, we had um, whatever we need to, to add, like also uh, sea salt. And uh, the lactobacteria, they increase the complexity of the pr produce by solubilizing, for example, the minerals of the rock dust that the plant would not be able to absorb uh, without the activity uh, of the microorganisms. The microorganisms, they cook. Uh, basically, the rock dust for the, the plant uh, in order to be able to absorb the nutrients uh, in there. So, yeah, we use actually many, many, many different types of uh, approaches to uh, plant nutrition. This is, uh, this is crustacea uh, fermentation where we, we get uh, uh, ketin and um, ketosan, sorry, uh, by fermenting uh, first in, uh, in uh, very low um, very low pH um, uh, media, and then in a very high alkaline uh, media. Uh, we do a lot of things, but I, I, I will not stop there. Maybe if you have questions later, I can answer. We produce biochar, uh, which allow us to increase the quality of our sense um, and to be able to have uh, more water retention, more nutrient uh, retention, a good uh, presence of microorganisms all the time because the biochar is, is a very good um, uh, sponge and a house for all of those, those beautiful microorganisms. Then now we speak about vegetables, if uh, it's left any time, Tobias. Yes, it's time. You have 20, 25 minutes, and then we have another 30 minutes for Q&A. So that's fine. Okay. Go okay. for it. Uh, this is a, a, a picture at the beginning of our um, of our adventure. Actually, you see already the the, the key lines, but it was uh, I think nine nine months, around nine months uh, after we, we arrived uh, to this uh, to this uh, place. Uh, we in those nine months we set up the the first greenhouse is a nine meter by forty five meter uh, greenhouse. Then we built two more uh, tunnels. And uh, here you see the first gardens it is a slope uh, from here to here. We have four uh, meters, um, four meters uh, drop. So they are not flat. And because of this, uh, we, we haven't done key line here, uh, mainly because we, we want to stay more rational uh, with veg vegetable production. So straight lines is easier. Uh, here we didn't started to produce yet vegetables. Actually, yes, during summer we had sweet potatoes and maybe here there was already garlic, but uh, it was just the beginning. Uh, you see these dry lines 
uh, is, 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 a, is a dry grass. Uh, this is uh, vetiver and comfrey uh, lines. They are alternated. See, this is, uh, this is uh, vetiver uh, uh, at the second year. Yeah, you don't see the comfrey, but this is the comfrey. This is the, uh, at the first year. Yeah, so you see one vetiver plant, one comfrey, one vetiver, one comfrey. I go back here. Basically, this now the vetiver in winter, it becomes uh, yellow. The vetiver has got roots which reaches uh, more than six meters when it can. Very fine. Uh, they're like walls of roots. It's like the, nearly there is no soil in between, full of roots. The comfrey reaches three, four meters deep when it can in, in like loose soil with very fat roots. So we created these uh, walls, retaining walls, which uh, create uh, by, by the natural er erosion, they stop the erosion. And actually after four years from the top to the bottom of the li this line, we already have 35 centime centimeter drop, uh, which means really that this, this war is working. Uh, we will increase uh, the amount, uh, the frequency of the vetiver in order to reach in maybe 10, 15 years, flat land, flat uh, terraces, yeah? like uh, gradons, like um, uh, uh, um, steps uh, made by, uh, made by uh, biomass, made by these plants that stop the erosion of the soil. And the roots, they create these beautiful, very deep pumps, which are uh, taking all the nutrients that go uh, because of uh, nutrient leaching, because of irrigation, because of uh, um, uh, rain, and the, the, the leaching would go with gravity, but uh, all the nutrients are stopped by these very deep roots and pumped up at, mm, and transformed in, in biomass. The, as you can see, is a lot of biomass, yeah? The, the comfrey is cut around four to six times a year, and we take it, uh, we cut it, and we take it with the, with the tractor to the, uh, water tanks where we uh, produce the, the fertilizer and then is uh, diluted into irrigation water, which is then uh, we have irrigation lines here, um, uh, rainwater irrigation, and then we irrigate and fertilize irrigate uh, with those lines. So basically the comfrey takes what is at the bottom where the vegetables they can't access and we take it back uh, to the higher places of the farm and with gravity fed irrigation we uh, give back to the topsoil those nutrients that the vegetables uh, didn't manage to absorb in the previous uh, seasons or in the previous uh, months and then uh, this is uh, this was this uh, last summer uh, what we have now on the on the vetiver lines and comfrey lines now here we just we we were cutting uh, the vetiver and the comfrey we have also paulonias uh, growing at every three meters by seven meter fifty yeah so three meters seven meter fifty now these trees they are around seven uh, five to seven meters tall and they will do the same thing that uh, they will do in the orchard so it's for protection vegetables especially in italy in the in during summertime but from may on uh, they need shade there's too much sun they 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 suffer they they burn the sun burn the fruits uh, it's like uh, in in very strong uh, very hot and very clear days, uh, it can be very challenging. We want to create a more a wetter, a more moisture, uh, a, a more protector, uh, protected environment. The way we, we plant vegetables, uh, let's say 80% of the space is mulched. Uh, and uh, most of the time we do no-till no -till, uh, vegetable production. And uh, maybe... Okay, sorry. Uh, so this would be a, a, a field uh, after few weeks after transplant. Uh, what we do, we go and harvest with, uh, this is the, the flail mower harvester. We harvest the, the, the pasture uh, of our farm. Uh, we, we collect it uh, this way. And then, sorry. 
and then we place it. Maybe I go a little bit on so you understand, and then we go back. Sorry. Yeah? What we do, for example, in this case, we have a crotolaria sun hemp cover crop. We flail mow it. We put a little, a little bit of compost on it. Uh, we use a broad fork if it's necessary. But then we don't, this is not tilled uh, soil. This is compost on top of the flail mode. You see here the flail mower on the flail mode uh, cover crop. So we have the roots of the cover crop. The sun hemp has got very deep tap roots, very woody, which they destroy uh, the, 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 the hard pan in the, in the deeper horizons. And then they slowly decompose. It's also nitrogen fixer. So very beautiful crop in this case. This is just an example. We do all sorts of approaches. Then in this case, we use um, uh, paper mulch. And on top of it, the, uh, the mulch I was telling you before, we harvest from the pasture. Then the, the, the crops are, are transplanted with a diamond shape pattern in order to have the highest coverage of the, of, the, of the soil. And you see, it's just like a, a sea of vegetables. We don't weed, uh, we use very little amount of water and, uh, and we get, uh, from analysis we, we did, we got a 1% increase in organic matter in our climate is nearly impossible because the, the oxidation rates, the temperatures are very, very high. And so it's very difficult to increase the organic matter so fast. So we started from 3.5% organic matter where we are producing vegetables, which for sandy soil is the minimum, is the minimum. Like for our clay soil, the minimum you should have is 1%, with sand is 3.5, and we reached now 7% in some spot, maybe even, uh, even more. It's just like uh, in, the, in, the, in the woodland, uh, we will get uh, the 7 to 10% organic matter. So going a little bit faster, uh, someone would say, uh, but there are no path. Yeah, you see that the path is actually the distance in between the crops. Also here you can see it, yeah? And then we just walk on the soil because it gets too soft and we want to compact it. As, as an animal would compact uh, the, the, the pasture that becomes too, too uh, soft, too organic. Yeah, no problem. I enter, we have as broccoli, we have as uh, cabbages, we have as anything with, uh, uh, do you know how you call this, uh, the basket, uh, but it's is the la gerla. Uh, so like a, a, a Japanese small site in one hand, the other hand takes the, the produce and we put it back to the gerla and then back to the, uh, to the plastic boxes. Then this is the system, before, after, yeah? You see the diamond shape here is an hexagon, tuck, 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 and at the center, another plant. Yeah. Then what we do when our crops are finished, this is uh, at, the end, uh, at the end of the winter, maybe it's uh, February, something like that. We flail mow it. Notice, I go back to the video, notice the, the wheels. Of, uh, of the machine, they are uh, driving on the path, yeah? So we never compact with machines the bed. I don't care about uh, heavy compaction. I care about vibrations of the machines that they, they destroy all the uh, soil aggregates worse than any other thing, yeah? So after that, this is before and after, before and after, yeah? You see the flame mower there. What we do here, it depends. Maybe before passing the flame mower, we sow a cover crop, and then we, with the flame mower, it mixes in the in a bit in the soil and a bit in the organic matter, and then we grow uh, a, a cover crop. Otherwise, uh, we put another layer of mulch, or sometimes we even transplant directly to this uh, to this uh, uh, mulch. You see, there is mulch uh, from the previous uh, mulching and also lots of biomass, yeah? Otherwise, we add a little bit more uh, hay or uh, now we are changing the system from hay, mulch to wood chips. That's because we have 
a high activity of microorganisms, and those microorganisms, they eat too fast the hay, and then the weeds grow through. And now we are going, uh, we started already from this year, some, some uh, spots, we are using wood chips because they take longer, they create better organic matter, and, uh, and they, are, they are just, uh, uh, we, we, we take the wood from the nearby woodland or from gardeners, they take the material, uh, the prunings from uh, to our farm, or in the system we are putting lots of uh, uh, biomass producing uh, trees. Then we'll have an amazing soil. Uh, in few years, really, we, we will uh, not need any more to add compost, actually, maybe in one or two years. And sometimes we use uh, broad forks. This I show you already. Uh, this is what we use when we want to transplant uh, uh, with diamond shape, like is a self-peeled uh, marker. This is the diamond shape in the greenhouse. Yeah, I go a bit faster. You see, this is all mulched. And for us, it's very important. This is our roller, uh, uh, walk behind tractor. Again, look at the wheels. They drive just on the, on the path. And this is a, a roller crimper that we build out of a gas bottle. And uh, maybe i show you again the video. You see that we have a vetch and, uh, and barley and a field pea uh, cover crop. We, we uh, crimp it down, yeah? You see it? And then we transplant directly into it. This is another system. Okay, I go, I go on, uh, but we sometimes we use uh, clover, uh, clover system under, under the, the um, for example, the cabbages or, or under other crops, under the, the zucchinis. Uh, sometimes we, we have to uh, cultivate uh, like here without, Oh, sorry. Can you see it again? Yes, you're back. You are on your Instagram page right now. Oh, I don't know what happened. Maybe the presentation closed. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Oh, I don't know what happened. Let's see. Uh, oh. oh. The, the presentation closed. I don't know why. Hmm. Sorry, just the way the. It's all good. Okay. Well, I don't really know what happened. Um, what do you see now? Uh, we see you're scrolling down, so we see the presentation again, and okay. yeah, it's all good. I nearly finished, huh? <laughs> yeah, go for it. So we have ten, five to ten minutes. Just okay. don't, don't feel in a hurry. Okay. Yeah. Tell me if you can see the presentation. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this was uh, where, when, uh, when we started in the greenhouse, you see the soil is, is, is a miserable soil because we had to, to build the, the, the um, terrace with the excavators and machineries. And this is not top soil anymore. So terrible. We started with all my, the, the compost, um, earth, earthworm compost, and then uh, with uh, cover crop and microorganisms and so on. And then this is the first time we prepare it. Uh, this is uh, the first cover crop. Um, we flame mode the, the cover crop. Again, this is an example. We added compost. We added rock dust. We added uh, from the top. We have uh, irrigation. We sprayed uh, fermented milkway in order to uh, to reach. Uh, sorry, to inoculate uh, lactobacteria and then uh, uh, covered uh, with a tarp. It just become a huge sauerkraut uh, sauerkraut tank. And in three days, you have this beautiful fermentation going on, quite smelly, but you understand that this is, is beautiful, um, where you have um, lactic uh, acid, you have uh, hydrogen peroxide, so the lactobacteria, they clear out uh, pathogens and so on. And then this is our greenhouse. So is uh, we produce uh, most of the, of the time in our fields from one third to double the amount um, of food per square meter if compared to the most 
uh, efficient uh, systems, uh, conventional systems. So we are very happy about that. You see, we we grow vertical. We we drop our um, we drop our our uh, crops uh, down. Later you will see. Here the first year there were tarps because there were those tarps in the farm. Uh, but then we we just uh, tried half greenhouse with tarps, half with mulch, and then the tarps we just throw them away. Uh, we, we we are not using plastic apart from. Uh, these silage tarps, which are from a French company, is the only model that is made with 85% uh, recycled poly, uh, polyethylene. Uh, so I would not buy plastic. Like uh, the only plastic we use is recyclable uh, polyethylene. Yeah. So, I mean, you see the amount of production of these greenhouses. We, we get uh, the, this is a flower branch. Okay. We get flower branch long as uh, sometimes like 70, 80 centimeters. And really we have to prune the fruits because otherwise there would be too many. Uh, we do melons, vertical melons, which produce um, double the amount. Uh, this for us is a very good uh, cash crop. And the nice thing is that you don't have to check for melons. When they are ready, they drop on the ground and you find them on the path. So they are ready, they are sweet, they are beautiful and people love them because normally at the supermarket you find those ones that they're harvested when they are not ready and they are expensive and, 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 and shitty. Um, we use polyculture and companion planting, not really for a allopathic or chemical, biochemical point of view, but mainly for space efficiency. So for example, here we have lattices uh, on a, on a um, uh, diamond shape pattern in between uh, the tomatoes growing on the other bed, we have uh, uh, sh uh, sugar peas and basil on one side, and for example, uh, celery on the other side growing on the line. So we keep always um, having a lots of roots in the soil. For us, it's extremely important to have roots in the soil, uh, just like in the natural system. For me, it's more important to have roots than, uh, uh, than mulch, than, than, than uh, the soil covered with dead material, yeah? Uh, when we can, we also do that. You see here again tomatoes with basil, uh, melons with uh, with basil. Yeah, here we have peppers with uh, with uh, sweet potatoes growing in between and everywhere. And uh, here we have tomatoes. You see that they are in, the fruits are on the ground because we just drop them in order to uh, be able to to produce them for six seven months uh, from uh, from March uh, on actually more than six, seven months. Here, for example, uh, nematode control. Nematodes are the most, the, the biggest problem for those ones that do no-till, at least in Italy, at least, and uh, also in the, in the greenhouses. Uh, this year we contained perfectly the nematode po population by treating the roots of the sensitive plants with um, uh, onion and garlic extract uh, when the plants are small. And then we planted tagetes, uh, which is, uh, I think, uh, um, uh, French marigold uh, in between every, every uh, plant. And we didn't have any problem uh, where we had some the last years, like on cucumbers and so on, very, very big problem. So here you see a leaf of uh, sweet potatoes growing very densely, uh, French marigold and, and peppers, vertical peppers, which also they grow up, um, grow two, three meters tall. Yeah, we prune them. You see here again, sweet potatoes and this, the flowers of the marigold, the flowers of the marigold and the, and the peppers. Uh, this is, uh, it has to be, I don't care to walk in the in the Amazon forest when I go in my greenhouse. I want to have a really high amount of uh, leaves. I want that every single photon of light coming from the sound uh, from the sun that is is uh, uh, stolen by the plants. Uh, I want to reach a very high darkness at the bottom, which means that the plants, they did their job. They stole all the uh, sun that they could uh, uh, use. Yep. So uh, I think I'm, I'm nearly finished. Uh, we produce, I told you, we produce uh, CSA. We have veggie box and fruit uh, um, scheme. Um, we, this is, for example, the, the uh, the harvest of one day, maybe this was in September, something like that. Yeah, 
it was September. So in, in, in the box, uh, our customers, they, 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 they get quite a lot of diversity the, the whole year round. We can produce 365 days um, a year. Uh, but uh, we normally in February, we stop for a couple of months. I mean, we stop. We stop the veggie boxes in, in the CSA, but we keep on selling to the restaurants. In maybe one or two years, we'll manage to, with a better rotation and, and, and the farm structure and so on, we'll be able to, to produce the whole year uh, around uh, veggie boxes. We, we um, uh, harvest and deliver um, three times a week. I didn't tell you before, We now we join a new system which is called uh, Alveare DCC is a system uh, where we basically receive uh, orders and we make the, the boxes and, and then we, we deliver them in, in, in one place where many other farmers also come to deliver meat and cheese and, and, and other produce. And so we have different channels and, and during the COVID, you know what happened in Italy, I mean, also in Germany, but in Italy, especially in Lombardia, in, in our region where everything started in Europe, uh, COVID was very, very strong thing. And then uh, the restaurants, they all closed. Now they are still closed. And so if we had just uh, uh, as customers restaurants, we would have had uh, big problems. But we are trying to diversify a lot. We have uh, a small market at the top of the uh, farm road, we, we place their bags with, uh, uh, with vegetables and fruits and people, uh, there is a box, they, they, pay, they pay there. So that, that's also another um, selling system. We have chickens. Now we will increase uh, the number because in the past farm I was, uh, we had uh, 1,500 uh, broilers per year and 250 uh, egg layers. And uh, now we, we will increase uh, the, uh, the, the, the chickens, they follow the herbivores, so they finish what the herbivores they didn't eat, and the, and and they spread the dung, so is not is decomposing uh, faster, and the animals they they can go uh, the herbivores they can go on the same pasture uh, sooner, and and not uh, not finding pathogens and the parasites and and so so on. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go into details uh, with animals. I told you before, we do not really rotational grazing, but it's like a, a holistic management uh, style for those one who, for you, uh, of you uh, who knows uh, Jaime Lizondo Brown, we like to follow more his, uh, his approach, which is uh, um, super uh, hyper intensive, uh, not yet because we are increasing the numbers of animals, uh, hyper intensive, non selective uh, grazing where the animals, they eat everything, they have to eat everything that is uh, on the ground. So is a, is a very strong impact, but with very strong, um, amazing results at, at the, uh, when the animals then they, they are moved and the, the grass grows back. So you see here, uh, the grass is when we started. We started with chickens. We didn't have uh, the animals, and through the 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 feed of the chickens, what happens is that they increase dramatically the the quality of the pasture. So you see the color of the pasture the first uh, the first year after the chickens passed, and after two. Uh, three weeks, you see the color, you see are starting to come out new uh, species just after the first pass. Now we have around uh, between 30 to 50 species in our pastures. And it's just the beginning. We produce mushrooms, uh, we produce them in, uh, in air pot. I don't know if you know them, normally they used to grow trees, uh, but we grow uh, with our wood chips. Um, we grow, we, we, we hang them uh, on the roof of the cellar. And uh, yeah, we are experimenting. This system is quite, uh, quite interesting. Uh, there were many, many other things uh, to speak about, but 70 meters is, is, not, is not a lot. Normally when we do farm tours, we do like three, four hours uh, tours. Uh, I, th I hope I managed to explain and to give a sense of uh, the operation, but uh, if there are any, any questions, I'm, I'm happy to, to answer. Again, I, ap I apologize for my English. <laughs> Don't worry, Matteo. It was very good. Thank you so much. It was it was a pleasure to watch you um, going through your slides, uh, speaking with big enthusiasm, and just being so natural, authentic. It was it was quite nice. And we have a chat full of questions. So um, 
I can start right there. And first of all, I want to say it's just, I don't know, it's amazing how much you do on the farm. And there are a lot of questions of like, and maybe I start with that, how many people, how many people are engaged on the farm? Are you doing everything on the farm with Paula, with your partner? Or um, do, you, do you work with interns? Do you work with employees? Or like, what's the, what's the situation there? So basically, is uh, is uh, me and Paula from the beginning, uh, but again, we we had the kids. So Paula was uh, twice in five years, twice uh, pregnant and and uh, 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 breastfeeding uh, still now. So she basically is five years that she's either pregnant or breastfeeding. <laughs> so she, she she's not being able to be in in the in the field as much as I did. So there is Jessica, which she came as a woofer at the beginning, but then she stayed, so she's, she's our colleague. So we are fixed people, three people. Mm -hmm. And then we have, uh, we have interns and we reach interns, volunteers. Uh, we reach seven people, seven, eight people during summertime in some periods. Okay. Uh, there is still that the farm is very chaotic there is a lot to do we don't have the we we didn't have the farm barn so you can imagine the tractor under the rain always uh, the the flame more under the rain now we are starting to build some barns and 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 everything will change and uh, we will be able to, to increase dr dr dramatically the income of the of the farm uh, because we'll make also a sort of uh, a farm restaurant and uh, we will be able to, to make, uh, transform our surplus into, into valuable uh, produce. Ah, in the presentation, I didn't talk about uh, the olives, but the olives, they are a, a very important part of the eco economics and also of the ecosystem of the farm. Uh, actually, the oil is the uh, most expensive oil in Italy, in this area, because we are we are producing the the is the last latitude wise, um, um, we are the last producers uh, in in Italy. So it's quite expensive, and we can uh, gain quite a lot of money. Anyway, yeah. So around now we are in uh, in five people, for example. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and your main season would be starting in. March until October or full year round. Full year round. Full year now, round. now look with the now we have the vegetables, the animals, plus the holly, the olive harvest. Mm -hmm. So we are harvesting uh, tons of olives, and we are taking every two days. We are taking them to the olive press. It's huge work. It's a mm -hmm. huge work, which adds upon what is already. Of course, you, we don't transplant much. We should have transplanted in the greenhouse. Uh, sown already winter crops but we didn't have the time yet mm -hmm. thank you and maybe just also for context like what's the do you how many do you get deep frosts in the winter so what's the or i don't know what you mean for deep frost now okay. it's one week that we are getting the everything white mm -hmm. uh there are no more frosts and as in the past it can reach minus seven yeah Okay. Uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. in the past, it would be easily minus 10 and the snow the whole year round. Uh, sorry, the snow the whole winter. Mm -hmm. uh, now, maximum, let's say an average minus two, minus three. But during the day, uh, also during winter, we get 20, we can get 18, 20 degrees. Eh? You can, okay. yeah. I mean, now, I mean, when I, I harvest olives, I'm with the t shirt. Okay. <laughs> That's nice. We have, uh, looking outside the window here, we have frosts and like uh, white trees covered in ice. So, uh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I yeah. wish I had that. I didn't speak about uh, pathogens and volts and we have lots of pathogens. We mm -hmm. are just like a, a subtropical, tropical uh, climate where everything goes fast mm -hmm. in summer. Yeah. And if the frost doesn't kill what it shouldn't be there during summer, big problem. Yeah, okay, thanks. So maybe just um, gathering a few questions about the key line system. So there was a question about um, what's the distance between the tree lines. Um, about uh, um, maybe just um, the, um, the order and like, so you're doing first the ribs with the plow and then you're putting hay on top of it. Or are you first putting the hay and then you let it decompose? And there was a question if, you, the, um, if you're irrigating the tree lines in the agroforestry system. Okay. 
So the, the fruit tree lines in the main orchard, because then we, we have many ones. I, I, I tell you about the, the one that you've seen the pictures is five meters between tree lines uh, for, for um, pears, um, plums and apricots is four meters between uh, the apple trees lines is four meters um, between the peaches and three meters in the um, uh, table grape. Okay. And, uh, we, um, we have uh, one drip irrigation mm -hmm. per tree line just mm -hmm. for emergencies or for uh, delivering fertilizer, like fertilizer irrigation. Okay. But uh -huh. normally, no, we don't, we don't uh, water the trees. Uh, maybe during emergency, like 40 degrees, 35 degrees. Yeah, we give some water uh, just to, 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 you know, the peaches, they need lots of water in the fruit and, and in order to have good fruits. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. So, mm -hmm. But I think 90% less than what a normal orchard would, uh, would use. Yeah, sure. And uh, then uh, the other question was uh, the order of the key line ripping. So ah, yeah. The, yeah. So first is we accumulate the mulch in order to um, uh, allow the roots of the of the plants to decompose, and then the the soil becomes already softer, and then we go with the ripper. I don't know if you've seen the, the picture before. We have a disc in front of the subsoiler in order to cut the mulch, otherwise okay. the mulch would collect on the ripper. So mm -hmm. first mulch, uh, after a few months or after a few weeks, the, the subsoiler. Well, um, are you using Allen varieties of tomatoes or hybrids? So do you, what, what's your approach in the market garden? Um, do you use just um, heritage seeds or hybrids as well? Uh, both, mm -hmm. uh, for example, in the main greenhouse, we, 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 we push for high production, yeah? Mm -hmm. And so it's hybrid varieties. Uh, well, commercial varieties. For example, the Quality Bue uh, is, uh, is uh, even if it's commercial variety, it's not a hybrid, yeah? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, otherwise, mostly hybrid. Three, four varieties, like one, no, actually three varieties, uh, um, big ones like uh, Cuore di Bue, and then cherries, and then uh, stro strawberry, uh, strawberry tomato, uh -huh. very sweet and, and nice. Mm -hmm. And then uh, outside this year we had 25 uh, heritage varieties of tomatoes, so old mm -hmm. varieties, okay. mainly old small because all colorful. Then mm -hmm. we put all of them in the same box. Okay, nice. And there was another question, if you have any problems with bringing in uh, seed weeds, uh, wheat seeds with the hay, like when you're, when you're uh, mulching. I, I want, uh, I want weed seeds. Okay. Because <laughs> meanwhile, what happens is that they will not start straight away uh, to grow. They, they will start when the, when the um, crop will be already growing and, and, and filling the spaces. Mm -hmm. So I want to have weeds because the weeds that will grow on that spot with that organic matter will be the most appropriate choice for the soil in order to regenerate it. Mm -hmm. Cover crop are rubbish. Cover mm -hmm. crop, we think they are good, but actually it is, is what we think is good for, for the soil. Weeds, I find really the soil and the uh, the, the, the I didn't show you, but uh, two years ago, in the field, in one of the field with the uh, mulched and the, and the, and the diamond shape pattern, uh, before putting the mulch, we had a, an amaranth, so mm -hmm. a big weed mm -hmm. that we have been sowing. So I went to the, with the flail mower in a field full of amaranth with seeds. Mm -hmm. I harvested it. I went in, in the field where, where then we uh, were going to grow vegetables and I've been sowing weeds. We grew an amaranth that was 160, completely full. The soil would have grown that, that amaranth because I know what happened. It needs that, yeah? Mm -hmm. So we grew it, we flame mow it, we cover it with mulch, we transplanted 
and no plants of amaranth grew. Mm -hmm. So we have to, I don't know what is the, uh, the word in, 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 in English, but we have to understand what really needs the soil, not what yeah. we need. Yeah. Okay. And weeds, weeds are, are beautiful. They are telling you, if you study a little bit about weeds bio as bioindicators, yeah. Yeah, you know that maybe you are keep, keeping on buying a bullshit compost, which is yeah. locking uh, some nutrients because of um, uh, an excess nitrogen and, 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 and you don't know why there is a, a, a porcelain or, or pigweed or, uh, or any other uh, weeds. I don't know what is growing in, in, in Germany, uh, but like weeds is very important to let the weeds uh, manifest. We have to understand how. Yeah, thank you. It's a, I guess a good approach to not see them as an enemy and to use them and um, work with them. And uh, still um, a question about the mulch. There's a question if you have problems with mouse, with wolves, um, eating the tree, um, tree roots or in the vegetable roots. Do you have any strategy for that? How you manage them or you just let them be? So voles are, are, the, are the, the symptom of a, a too simple system. Uh, small roditors from a, a, an, um, a, an, eco an, an ecological perspective uh, of a succession, mm -hmm. uh, voles and, and mice and, and roditors, they come to speed up. For example, there are brambles, they come and they sow Uh, the, the seeds of an apple, uh, the seeds of, of an oak, in order to have from the brambles, from the black, uh, blackberry uh, patch, to grow a forest. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of mice, a lot of voles, it means that your system is too, uh, is too poor from mm -hmm. a bio functional biodiversity point of view. When we arrived, you would walk on voles galleries everywhere. Everywhere. So increase organic matter, Get a good dog. We have a dog, perfect one. <laughs> we place silage tarps on the on the vegetable beds. We wait two three weeks in the first years, and then two three people they remove very fast the tarp and Chicho, which is the name of the of our dog, very fast. Pa 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 pa. It kills maybe 10, 15 uh, mice and voles in uh, in 30 seconds. Yeah. So again, uh, you have to use. I know it seems to be funny. It's also a little bit disgusting for some of you, but it's nature. Like predators are the most amazing, um, the most amazing uh, solution that we should uh, use. Like Jack Russells, like every, every farmer should have a Jack Russell and should train it. It goes in the in the in the caves under the ground and just gets anything, anything. So now we have no, we don't have any more problems with voles with the fruit trees. We don't mulch anymore because we are planting more and more plants. We substitute the mulch of the first year. The mulch is just for the first years. Mulch is, uh, is good just for annual, just for annuals. Otherwise, uh, if you go in the forest, when there is too much mulch, it means that the forest is getting older and is preparing the soil for the new seedlings to grow. Yeah, so yeah, this is the, the way I, I look at it. Thank you for the answer. I guess that gives the, the term appropriate technology a whole new, um, whole new meaning, <laughs> working with your dog. Um, okay, so another question was, okay, do you have like in any, any problems having cooch grass? Uh, do you know cooch grass growing through um, your mulch systems or? Mm, no, I mean, uh, again, cooch grass is the symptom of uh, Of a, of a compact uh, yeah. soil. So once you have roots in the soil, never mulch, never mulch a tilled soil. Because a tilled soil, what happens, you tilt the soil and then the soil collapses on itself. If you have a lot of biter, a lot of organic matter, it will be easier. Yeah, but the vegetables that you transplant, it will not be able to grow as deep as it should grow before then the soil collapses. Yeah, if you have a rain is even, even worse. So roots, the key is roots. The, the, the uh, couch grass grows 
when this where the soil is compact when where the soil is burned by the sun when the the soil doesn't have a, a thick and dense uh, pattern of uh, tra transplanting if you have good grass with soft soil you go there you take it out yeah take it out the first year no problem rather than going with the tiller and, and multiplying it okay thank you um there was another question about your biofertilizers so um of how you're using the comfrey and alpha alpha um if you when you're f letting it ferment and then putting it into the drip irrigation how you're doing that and another question of when you talked about the sauerkraut in the greenhouse um what you used in order to uh, bring the lactic the, the acid bacteria to so first question uh, the the how do you call them in in uh, in italian is uh, mar macerati uh, when you speak about uh, like uh, leaf uh, uh, leaf uh, fertilizers how, how do you call when you put uh, put it in water in english Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I think for, for all the listeners, uh, Pflanzenferment, so so was wie Jauche. Yeah. Yeah, like like the one you, you everybody does with nettle, for example. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's Jauche for the, for the oh, German every, listeners. Uh, so basically, we do the same thing uh, as everybody's doing with the nettle, but we observe in the landscape all the plants that we think they're particular or all the plants that, that show us that they are uh, dynamic accumulators, which means they grow faster than the others. It means that they absorb more nutrients than the other. In fact, the, when the water smell of uh, dung, cow dung, it means that the concentration of nutrients is as high as the, the, the um, uh, sort of uh, a collection by the cow of a lot of material transformed in a small uh, cow dung. So we, we put them in water. Uh, you can go in the, in the woodland, take some, some uh, hummus, from, from the woodland and chuck it like in 1000 liter, maybe one, uh, one bucket, and then we mix it. Every time that I pass from there, I go there and mix it. Yeah, in order to speed up the, the composition. And then uh, we basically use around 10% in water. So quite, quite, uh, quite a good amount. But I want to push uh, crops. So one day we'll not be using any compost. We'll the only solids that we will move it will be mulch, yeah, and and cover crop seeds. Otherwise, anything else moved by water, which is uh, uh, much more sustainable than moving compost. Uh, making compost is so unsustainable. Everybody speaks about compost. It's like so unsustainable compost. It's like if every single conventional farmer would become crazy like all of us uh, tomorrow, it would be a huge problem. It's like, where do we get all that compost? No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, the other question was uh, uh, about the greenhouse, like what you used when you used the cover crop in order like, to, to speed yeah, up the yeah, presentation. Yeah. Uh, it's milkway. We get milkway from uh, uh, cheesery, from uh, farms that make cheese. And the leftover of the cheese is this uh, sort of uh, milk, is the milk way. And we let it ferment. Uh, we remove the top cheese that uh, goes on the top um, for two, three weeks. And then, um, and then I let it ferment on its own and it gets to 2.9 pH. So very acidic, very high in lactobacteria. It's like if you cut yourself, you put your hands there and no problem with infections. You can wash your face and become just like uh, so soft. And if you put it on the soil, the lactobacteria, as is happening in the, in the sauerkraut, will eat the fiber, will eat the sugars, will eat what is, is, uh, is in there. Not the fiber, sorry, the sugars and the, and the easy, easy digestible materials. And they speed up the pre-decomposition. Pre so when you move the, the tarp, you still see some stuff, but it's pretty composed and it, it created all the pre prebiotics in order to soil life, uh, natural soil life to start and thrive there. Uh, a personal question from me on that side. 
um, are you using some kind of biofertilization with your biochar as well? So do you charge it with kind of a liquid fertilizer as well? Yeah, uh, with uh, comfrey or alfalfa or uh, liquid manure. Mm -hmm. we, have the, we have the Contiki, uh, Contiki kiln. Uh, then we have a pipe under it and we stop the combustion already with the, with the fertilizer. Okay, thank you. So there was, there was a one question of like um, five books that you would recommend that are inspiring for you um, regarding your agriculture, soil health, agroecology, uh, whatsoever. Do you have any, any favorites that, comes, that, come, that come to your mind so far? Uh, you know, when they ask you your best movie, uh, it's very, yes. it's very difficult. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, very good books. There are the, the three volumes of uh, Gerard uh, Dusserf. They are in French, but uh, everybody can translate it very easily. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the bioindicator. Um, uh, it's called. Um, wait a second. Uh, maybe I uh, shall I send you uh, a, a yeah. Send yeah. link. Yeah, yeah. it would Just be nice. If you are not already following the the what he's doing, uh, John Kemp, uh, do it because he just puts together so many good things. I mean, there is uh, Marschner uh, books. Uh, there is uh, there are so many long and, and boring books, but anything, anything. Mm -hmm. Also, children book, like the, the, the books they have to activate something that is already in our brain, and uh, and via observation, I think. I'm not, I love books. I keep on buying uh, books, but I look at pictures and I don't read them. I, I prefer to go out in the woods and, and, and in the pasture and, and, and look at things and observe. And then you know what books you have and you, rem you, you go and check in the book just what you need. But maybe I can send you then a, a list of books and, and then you can send it to all the participants. Yeah, well, we have a few questions left. There was one like the, the BCS tractor that you're using. Is it 75 centimeters uh, width or 80 centimeters? So how, how wide are your vegetable beds in the market garden? Uh, now, now they're wider. Uh, now we have 90 centimeter wide. 90 centimeters. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 75, 80 to me is... Is is uh, is not enough because planting with the the diamond shape, it means to not be able to to do it with the right uh, with the right sizes. Yeah. And okay. 90, and I, I prefer to have uh, uh, a bigger surface because uh, the path is like stopping the beautiful processes that are going on mm -hmm. uh, in the bed. And having too many paths is just like having wounds. Open wounds is it's just like having you know more weeds growing, uh, more material to mulch, more time to to weed. So path for me, in our path. I don't know if you've seen it. It's like eighteen centimeter wide. 18. Oh wow! Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can't stay with two with two foot. Yeah. It's yeah. like Sha Shaolin uh, farming. Nice. Um, so and uh, I think you used. Um, three lines of, for example, cabbage on the 90 centimeters, yeah, for the diagonal spacing. Was that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. And that's just in order to create the full, uh, yeah. the full darkness on the ground, like you said it beautifully. <laughs> uh, there was another question about um, your chicken, your, the, the chicken system. So do you, do the chicken feed also on the leftovers on the planting beds? So, to, so do you integrate them in the market garden? Yeah. And are you, concerned uh, so do you do you buy in grains for the chicken feed so do you buy in chicken feed and are you like what's the system like do you for the mobile coop do you uh, do you have problems with the slope on the slope moving them or uh so uh yeah we put them uh, every now and then on, on on the crops but not very often because we have a continuous uh, cropping uh, system mm -hmm. and i prefer that the chickens follow follow the animals rather yeah. than uh, the vegetables yeah mm -hmm. and um uh, ba -ba -ba. yeah we we buy a, a, a commercial feed organic mm -hmm. uh, for us it's, it's just i see it as a fertilizer yeah mm -hmm. it's the yeah. only fertilizer that we buy from outside yeah. so it uh, is a, a organic commercial made by a cooperative of farmers uh, quite close to here mm -hmm. uh is Possibly the most unsustainable thing that uh, we have in our farm. Yeah. 
uh, and then uh, the chicken uh, tractor, we move it on, on the flattest uh, parts. And then we have the, the chicken tractor and the nets. So yeah. the, the animals, they can move uh, also on slopes. Mm -hmm. And do you use hybrid um, chicken layers? So, or? Uh, we, we tried uh, in, in, on these last 10 years, uh, eight years, we tried so many different breeds. Uh, I think the next ones will be Livornese, the white ones, and, and the hybrids. Uh, they're skinnier, they're more productive. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, maybe we have a few questions left and there was one, do you have problems with mildew in the greenhouse as it is very dense planted? Mm, on, on what? On, on uh, zucchinis? Uh, on, uh, yeah, on the tomatoes, on the cucumbers, any problems with plants? Um, mildew. Mildew, mildew. Is the white. The white. Yeah, uh, yeah, mode. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the end of the season, when it gets the air gets uh, more um, moist, yes, but uh, we have big windows like uh, along along the, the greenhouse. We had forty five meters long uh, uh, windows on one side, the other, and we have big uh, big doors. So there is uh, in in the morning the air flow goes from the lake to the mountain, and the in the night from uh, from the top of the mountain through. Uh, through the, the long windows of the greenhouse. So uh, we use very little water. So in the greenhouse, it's quite dry. And actually, uh, we use little water, but I also water a, a, as... Uh, also when the tomatoes are producing, I water from the top. So uh, the mildew, best thing you can do is water from the top to wash it away. Yeah, if you add some uh, milk whey into the water, if you add uh, uh, if you add uh, fertilizers, uh, and and you water from the top is is just uh, it's just uh, it's just perfect. Of course, we do small sec uh, small uh, sections of uh, irrigations. Also, on the tomatoes, everybody say, "Ah, oh, you're crazy." Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm crazy. Uh, but plants they want water from the top for late blight and, and blight. The only thing is just to stay below 10 millimeters of water per, per irrigation. And in the greenhouse, we also have a, a drip irrigation. Yeah. So when I see that there is it's too crowded, the water can't uh, access everywhere, I stop from the top and then I do drip lines. But as, as, uh, as soon as I put the, the crops down, uh, I lay the tomatoes down, I lay uh, the cucumbers down from the top again because we put nutrients in it. Okay, thank you very much, Matteo. And maybe just one last question about your animals, since you t didn't talk to, um, much about them. Like, how big is the sheep herd? Do you have, and I think you, you had some donkeys in the picture, some horses. Like, what's the, like, what kind of animals do you have and how many of them? So, in row, I don't tell you the whole idea of the genetics because they are, we are doing something that in Italy nobody really does, but more typical in Germany and in, in the northern countries with the genetics of the animals. So we have different genetics of, of sheep. Uh, now we have around uh, 20, 20 sheep because we started this year, but we will, we will have to reach uh, around 40, 40 sheep. So in row, what happens? The sheep enters the pasture. They eat the most protein and most digestible uh, stuff. And they are together with the donkeys, but uh, a single wire, um, uh, a single string, uh, yeah, wire uh, divides the donkeys from the sheep. The sheep, they can access the donkeys, but the donkeys can't access the, the sheep. This is because the donkey have to clean all the most fibrous, less pro protein rich uh, pasture, because the, the idea is to clear perfect, perfectly the pasture. So first the sheep, they eat, they are a little bit picky and they, they like the very fresh and crunchy stuff. And then uh, we, we move on the, 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 the sheep and we, we move the wire. And so the donkeys finish what the, the, the sheep didn't. And then after that, the chickens and, and the ducks and so on come, they open the dung, they eat what is left, they add a new, uh, a new uh, dung and also the fertilizer from the from the grains, and uh, and then we leave uh, exploding nature as uh, as it should do.
in uh, in nature. But I, I think we will get also ponies. Okay. Because it's it's very good animal uh, for for is is a light lightweight animal eating anything dry uh, thorny and so on and uh, yeah together with the donkeys okay awesome thank you so much Matteo um, it was a very very great session with you and I think we could go on you could go on for so so much longer um, but yeah I think we, we're coming to an end here and uh, I just want to repeat um, my, my gratefulness for you to, to participate in this program, to participate in our conference, and to have you here talking, really bringing in the agroecology aspect in the whole market garden picture and fitting it in into a diverse ecosystem yeah, and the, the ecosystem that you've built and with Paul, with your partners and all the other people who put in their work on your farm. And um, yeah, it was, it was an inspiring speech. I can I can talk for myself, but I'm sure the the listeners and the viewers um, enjoyed it as well. And um, I want to tell you all the best. Have a great Sunday. Yeah, all the best to your partner, to your kids, and um, enjoy the rest of the day. Maybe it's a little bit warmer than here. So and I, it looks like it's sunny behind you. So enjoy a few photons, capture a few yourself, and uh, yeah, just have a great day, Matteo. Okay. Thank you very much for the organization and uh, hope to, to see you in Germany yeah. the next year. <laughs> it would be great. And maybe I can visit you next year. Ah, here, uh, yeah. Yeah. Always, uh, you're yeah. welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Have a great Thank day. You. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.